Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, October 11, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, here it is. They closed officially above the neckline of the head and shoulders pattern. If you go back to yesterday, they had already done it in the SPX. Now they've done it in the SPY. It's off the table. This is a non-event. Does not mean, I repeat, does not mean the market cannot go down. What it does mean is the official pattern from the textbook thing is off the table. What else does that do? Well, it doesn't have to, but generally will do the following. You close back above the neckline. It takes the remaining shorts off the table. Shorts have to cover. Buying begets buying. A squeeze operation ensues, and you could get another squeeze higher. If they start to push higher, the shorts that are remaining will have to cover, and that will ignite the next leg higher, right into and likely above the convergence of those moving averages up above current price. It's the 100 and the 50 period moving average. There's a gap above all that stuff. Now, here's the wild card. What's the wild card? Well, we've got the alphabet soup still ongoing this week. Plus, we have the beginning of earnings season really get started in earnest with the banks reporting late this week. So here's what we've got. We had the PPI today. Really didn't have an effect. We have the CPI tomorrow on Thursday. Consumer price index can certainly be a market moving event, meaning it can be a great excuse to move the tape. My contention is whichever direction the tape's going to go is built in or baked into the cake already. They use these things as the spark or the excuse to move them, whether it's up or down. All we have to know are the numbers. Is it bearish below X? Is it bullish above Y? Anything else is almost irrelevant. The negation, if you will, of the head and shoulders pattern takes the target off the table. There is no target. Again, doesn't mean the market can't come down tomorrow or later. It just means that that pattern is no longer active. Let's look at this another way. And I like to do this in the live room. We do this all the time. I'm going to do it right here. We've done this before. The market had an excuse to go down. It had every excuse to go down. It was fighting the neckline of the head and shoulders formation the last couple of days. Could have went down today on the PPI data. We had some Fed speakers today. We had the Fed minutes. The market ran a test of some lower stuff, and we'll get to that later. That's important stuff. There was a bucket full of money made today around today's lows. From where? From inside the numbers. From the live room. We'll get to that later. Keep your panties on. What my point right now is the market had every excuse or opportunity to go lower. It chose not to. There's a bid under the market. There's a rescue team under the market. Call it whatever you want. Without being able to go lower yet this week, is the CPI data really the thing that's going to do it? Pull the rug out? Or are they going to begin the squeeze operation tomorrow for another leg higher? Either way is possible. It's at 8.30 a.m., an hour before the opening bell. By the time 9.30 rolls around, we'll have a pretty good idea of which way they're going. Just getting a different look. Here's a two-hour chart, a 120-minute time frame. So the market ran up into this 100-period moving average, hugged it, pulled back, stayed inside this big-time breakup candle, came down to test the vicinity of the neighborhood of the lows. How many times have we gone over this over and over and over? And they didn't get below the low. Therefore, they went back up in the other direction, had somewhat of an on-time type of situation, back above the 100-period moving average. The 120 chart was a pullback operation in a continuing uptrend in a larger bounce in a downtrend. Let's keep that in perspective too. This is still a bounce in a downtrend until they start getting above way higher stuff. A bounce in a downtrend. Watch this. Not that this is anytime soon. However, look at that trend line. 
There's a gap up there. There's a big time breakdown candle high over here. All kinds of stuff depending on when they hit that trend line. Very important trend line. Not going to keep it on there. Keep it on your own chart. It's information we need to know for later. Maybe. What about the weekly chart? What's going on over here? Well, you've got a 20 period moving average. If they continue higher, they're running a test of that. And also what? Big time breakdown candle high. That high is all the way at 444.97. We'll call it 445 for argument's sake. Semi fat round number in a sense. Spike a 20 period moving average. Last moving average in the line of defense from a weekly chart perspective. Get above that, above 435, what happens? The trend gets turned back to the upside. Technically speaking, on a longer term basis, as long as they're above the 50 period moving average, a lot of money managers, most money managers, will continue that above trend. They use the 50 period moving average on a weekly basis as their bogey. How do I know that? Because I know that. They're not traders, they're allocators of capital, mutual fund managers, pension fund managers, big time hedge fund managers that are in for the long pull, not traders, these are position holders. As long as things are above the 50 period moving average on the weekly chart, meaning the major market, they're fine with it. But when you have the last moving average in the line of defense, there's nothing left to say but for they're above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend until what? Until she dumps your shit out the window. Above all the moving averages, the window's closed. You folks reading On The Docket, you signed up for On The Docket, onthedocket.mystrategicforecast.com. Today you had three tails, the tail that wags the economic conversation. The market is the tail. The economists, the economy, the analysts, the strategists, the pundits on TV, they're all the dog. Pre-game warm-up routine, thinking pictures. Little side note today for coffee. Coffee is for closers. Little recycled tinfoil hat stuff. Nothing new this week. We've got the solar eclipse over the weekend. We have a reconomic section each and every day. We have a psych ward section, market psychology. Get on the docket. Read it each and every day. There's good information here. A lot of work goes into this thing. I'm doing it for your benefit, not mine. Anybody make money today inside the numbers? Wait till you see this. Today was basically a three-trick pony, three prime numbers. Not prime numbers in the sense of prime numbers, but three prime numbers that worked. We're going to go over them. It's one of those funny how this works situation. You can read the notes and pause the video, go back to the charts and double check all the work and I urge you to do so read the rhetoric on your own we'll use 43475 as the early pivot today this is all posted at 0 dark 30 in the morning what is that that's around 6 a.m. 5:30 sometimes 6:15 it's somewhere in there there's our early pivot 43475 as you can see, markets came down to test the pivot, bounced off the pivot. Did we have positive trades from the pivot? Yes, we did. Scalps with potential. Traders got a few points. Some traders got 10 points or more. Nice trade. Moving along. Above, meaning above the pivot, and the door opens for a leg higher up to what? 436.35. And if above to the highs from yesterday, but that is overhead resistance. And lo and behold, there she is, 436.35, market opens up down here, runs up to it, finds overhead resistance, comes down to what? The pivot. Funny how that works. So we had traders short, not a ton, but we had some traders short around the open down here, up here, and then rode it down, not necessarily all the way, some did, some didn't, but that's a scalp with potential. The flip side, falling below the pivot, opens the door for a leg lower to where? 433 and a quarter. Remember, this is at zero dark 30. How you doing? 433.25 in the afternoon, spiked it by a couple of pennies, rocket ride right back to where? 436.35, closed just a couple of pennies below. Funny how this works, the numbers work, all these numbers, and these were the only three numbers essentially on the board today, these numbers were posted 
long before the opening bell. How do you do that? Very carefully. If you're trading actively in the markets during the trading day and you're not equipped with the numbers, my only question to you is, what are you equipped with? The numbers work. As we move along, you'll see what's the scoop at 9 o'clock. It's bullish while above the pivot, 434.75, 436.35 is a target. The flip side, the just in caser, 433 and a quarter. We got the just in caser later. This is all still before the opening bell. It's all in here. Read them, pause them, double check the work. In fact, look at the post just after lunchtime at 1207. Below the pivot, the door is open for 433.25, give or take. Both are bounce back, meaning here's the just in caser creating a zone if you needed it. Both are bounce back places and can be considered a zone as a just in caser. About stocks on the move, we had four opportunities on the board still in the front end of or leading into earnings season. They will become fast and furious shortly. We had Den, DVA, NOG, and BAX. NOG's off the table. It's a no trade. The other three did hit their numbers. We'll take a look at the charts. Then getting a buzz cut at the open, you can see here, came close to the number, hovered, hovered. This is not the manner in which, but just to prove a point, the low of day happens to be 87.90. My number was 87.91, posted at zero dark 30. How you doing? The numbers work. DVA, DeVita Holmes, or Inc., getting a buzz cut at the opening bell. You could see the three numbers. It was a zone. Between the first and second, they certainly gave you the deal multiple times. Later on, came down to the third, bounced away from that. But the trade is over first thing in the morning when they did this routine here on the first two numbers. Some participation in the room. Baxter, they gave you the deal at the first number. Doesn't look like much, but it's a base hit. Base hits put you in the Hall of Fame. Gave you 50 cents on a $33, $34 stock. That's more than the 1% minimum required target. You never know which ones are going to give you the rocket ride. You never know which ones are going to give you the base hit. We take the base hits. We put them in our pocket. Base hits put you in the Hall of Fame. Where have you heard that before? Just want to show you this just for kicks. Just to show you that there are traders participating with these numbers. Here's a live room member. Inside the numbers, live room member. Robert V, looks like I bought the low and I'm having a barrel of fun. 17 points and holding a trailer. Numbers work. Psych Ward, invaluable. He's working hard. He's making money. And guess what? Had fun this afternoon. Here's another live room participant. Waited patiently for the spy, 433 and a quarter, and was paid handsomely. There you go. Here's another one. You think these dudes are getting their money's worth? You betcha. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Can't get through an important resistance area, including the 20-period moving average. However, as much as the spiders may turn bullish above that neckline, we don't know yet. However, the IWM is still well below their neckline, never reached their head and shoulders pattern target. The chart's in a different position, favorite market leading indicator, just the bounce in a downtrend, nothing more, nothing less. We take it at face value. No change from yesterday. Basically, it was underperformance today. There was relative weakness in the IWM or my favorite market leading indicator. Of note, puzzle piece on the table. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Little bit up, not relative strength, but almost on par with the S&P. It's all the same market. If they're all going to rally, they're all going to rally together. Or even if the S&P is going to rally, the majority, if not everything, will rally together. If they fall, they're all going to fall together. That's just the way it works. They don't necessarily do that each and every day to the same magnitude, intraday, day-to-day. But in large part, if the S&P is going to go up 50 or 75 or 100 points over a couple of days, for example, well, the transports are going to participate. The IWM is going to participate. The Qs, Smash Mouth, everything across the board will likely participate. That's just the way the market works. It's the rising tide lifts all boats situation. About the Q people, above all the moving averages, the trend is what? You betcha. The trend is your friend. Yesterday, they ran a test of the breakdown candle high. Today, they closed right below it. 
They're hovering, an opportunity to go down. They didn't take the opportunity. They're hanging around. This is bullish until proven otherwise. Maybe they gap above it tomorrow. They're above it now in the after hours, but that doesn't mean squat because we have alphabet soup in terms of PPI or CPI, not PPI, tomorrow morning. Doesn't matter whether it's CPI, PPI, ABC, XYZ. It's all the same nonsense. They have a formula a mile long. There's a margin of error you can drive a truck through and everybody trades off the number. It's a joke. XLF was basically flat today, but guess what they're waiting on? They're waiting on the bank release of their earnings data. Dater. JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, PNC, the list goes on and on. Once these banks report, the XLF will move one way or the other. Until that happens, nobody's taking a stout position one way or the other. About Smash Mouth, relative strength above all the moving averages. Trend is your friend. You knew that was coming. If these are hints, they're hints. If they're clues, they're clues. The SMH is a pretty good proxy for the tech space. Tech space is doing fine. They're above all the moving averages. And I say this in the live room when we see these divergences or clues or hints in one market or another. It can't be a negative thing with the SMH and the Qs in the position they're in. Can't be negative for the SPY. Doesn't mean the SPY has to go up tomorrow. Doesn't mean anything has to go up tomorrow. But it can't be a negative. We've taken this as a negative off the table Nothing wrong with the SMH and the Qs. Could that be a target for the SMH or Smash Mouth? 153 and a half, 154, 153.75, depending on where they touch and when they touch this trend line. If they touch this trend line, you can expect that to be bona fide overhead resistance. I would put that one on a sticky note. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I am David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.